Then as I felt the last of my breath leave my lungs, I closed my eyes. And what did I freaking say? You will stop breathing. And then with the softest, most serene voice, she spoke. Don't be scared, my child, for it is not your time to go. Hello, all of you gorgeous people watching today's video. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing a trip report on Arrowhead. And in this series, what I like to do is read the story for the first time. I've never read the story. It was sent to me, or it's rather Cody picked it. And then I'm going to assess whether or not they proceeded with caution, whether they followed proper safety protocol. I'm going to be rather critical sometimes of the writing, just a warning there. If that bothers you, click off the video. The whole point of me is to basically judge their experience in the view of are they following safe use and harm reduction practices. And to be clear, this video series is not done to promote or glorify the use of any of these compounds. In fact, usually it's quite the opposite. We preach that the best form of harm reduction is always going to be abstinence, meaning just don't touch this shit. Anyway, for today's story, it is titled The God Dose, and it is a combination of 5-methoxy-DMT and cannabis. As for brief safety, lesson on 5-MeO-DMT, this is the same substance that you get from the Bufo alvaris toad via rubbing a toothpick on its skin, and then smoking the slime. It's about twice as potent as regular NNDMT. It's not as visually satisfying. There's less entity contact. It's more so a direct teleportation to the face of God. And it is dangerous. People have died from accidentally smoking too much. They've stopped breathing. Versus with regular NNDMT, I don't believe there's a single story of someone dying from smoking too much. So if you're ever going to explore this substance, you must research the hell out of it. And you always want a sitter with you to throw water on your face in case you stop breathing. Anyway, he or she is 135 pounds, I'm not sure, and let's get right into this. So, me and my friends have done many psychedelics. In the years I've gone way beyond what I thought tripping was. I first thought tripping was all about colors and trails, then it became about passing this one point where all of reality goes out the f window and anything is possible to see or do. But now, it's all about the spirituality in nature, man. I hadn't started doing the wild, strong doses until after the near-death experience. After the near-death experience, we started calling ourselves Fearless Psychonauts. Fuck the milligram scale, because it's more fun to be in the dark about it. Oh my god, no. An active dose of 5-MeO-DMT is... I mean, you could go far and even 8 milligrams. 8 milligrams, if you don't have one of those, like, 500 plus dollar accurate lab-grade scales, is going to be exceedingly difficult, nay impossible, to accurately measure out. And... Most people are just using one of those $20 jewelry Amazon scales. That's what I use for the longest time. And anything below about, I don't know, 30 milligrams, it can't accurately touch. 30 even might be stretching it, to be honest. I, I feel like it's only accurate at like 100. So unless this guy, like when you're taking 5-MeO, you need to, oh man, you got to be really careful because you can die and an active dose is so low. So saying being in the dark without scales is just leading me to believe this is an actual near-death experience. It was just like any other day. Me and my friends were smoking pot just like usual. My friend Ken Hadouken had purchased a gram of 5-MeO-DMT. We had been experimenting with it for about three days. We would sprinkle just a smidge on a bowl of pot. It felt like eating a couple hits of decent acid. The trails were massive. The colors were prevalent, and even though there was an uncomfortable body rush at first, it was the bomb. So me and Ken were sitting in his room. He had already come down from the smoking some 5-MeO. He smoked it about 20 minutes before I took the hit. Ken is my most experienced friend while tripping. He has eaten 12 hits of acid all at once with no tolerance. He was the one that showed me colors and trails are only the first step into a completely different universe. Ken covered the entire bowl of pot with 5-MeO. He said, I dare you to take the biggest hit yet. I obviously, trying to look like a badass in front of my friend, was like, you're damn right. I will, so I did. Ellipses. I put the lighter to it and took the hit. It tasted just like any other hit of 5-MeO. Burning plastic. Mmm, mmm, bitch. This hit was different, though. I exhaled. Ken looked at me and asked me if I felt anything. I looked at him and I said, no, because I honestly didn't. Oh shit, I was wrong. I slowly started feeling my breath weakening. I was breathing less and less with every breath. I was trying to breathe harder and harder, but it was just making it worse. I leaned back on the bed because I had no physical energy left from the lack of air. Then as I felt the last of my breath leave my lungs, I closed my eyes. And what did I freaking say? You will stop breathing. Idiots. As my eyes closed, I saw no colors. My soul rose above my body. 
I looked back and saw my body laying lifeless on my friend's bed. Then I looked forward towards the dark tunnel. My body started moving toward the tunnel. Started moving toward... Started moving toward the tu- the the god damn it. Let's try to figure out what he's saying. My body started moving towards the tunnel. The tunnel started moving towards me. It was as if we were trying to meet one another. Once we started moving towards one another, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. Well, this sounds like a traditional NDE. When I was about six feet away from the white light, someone started to come out of the light. The light was pure and blinding. I looked around because it was so bright. The tunnel was now completely infinite. Surrounding me were thousands of orbs that appeared like eyes. For a visual hint, look at Alex Gray's dying. The orbs appeared to be like eyes because they were shaped just like an eye. You don't say. And I could see through them. The eyes were looking at different places in the universe at all points in time. I could see all and everything that has and ever will happen. I then looked forward and the most beautiful, most peaceful, and most gentle woman walked out of the light. Her hair was brown, her cheeks were rose-colored, and her skin looked softer than the petal of a rose. She was wearing a white robe that had a hood that was up and the robe covered her whole body. And then with the softest, most serene voice she spoke. The first thing she said was, Don't be scared, my child, for it is not your time to go. Then all the fear that I had instilled in my body went away. I didn't know why, but I knew I could trust her. Then every question I ever had about life, religion, or God was answered. It's hard to say everything that was told to me, because it's difficult and it chokes me up every time I think about it, but I'll try to state everything the woman had said to me. The woman told me that no religion is wrong because it is just the word of God being seen and spoken through another person's eyes. You can only sway a person's thoughts because a person will always think what they want because they think it's their life and their rules. The woman said, we are born. Then we are meant to enjoy all of life, the good, the bad, and everything in between, because that is the meaning of life, to simply enjoy it, because that was God's gift to us as her children, the most precious thing God could provide us with, life. She said, when we die, our soul returns back with God, and our body is meant to stay on the earth to fertilize other life, such as plants. Everything happens in cycles, just like our lives. It's the same with all everyday occurrences. Then after we turn with God in heaven, we get to receive all the riches of the afterlife. Then as quickly as I got there and received the knowledge people searched their whole lives for, my eyes were opening and I was sitting up. Then a physical wind started moving out of my chest. It was the greatest feeling of ecstasy one can ever feel. I looked at Ken and both of her eyes were filled with tears. Then right as we were about to cry, about our friend who had left the room to use the bathroom had entered. And we acted as if nothing had happened. Our friend could tell something happened, but had no clue what. We spoke about it the next day. Apparently, when I sat back and stopped breathing, Ken said a woman's voice they had never heard came out of me, speaking through me words of great wisdom. I couldn't believe the woman spoke through me and asked him what she said, and he said everything word for word what happened. It changed me and him forever. Not only did I become religious, but Ken did too. And that is a change for him because he was one of the people that I knew that was extremely evil. That's a plot twist. So he was evil, Ken. Violence. He's done some wild, unmentionable shit. And by unmentionable, I mean unimaginable. All I can say is the God is real. I spoke to the Mother Mary, and it doesn't matter if you can believe me or not, because God and I know the truth. I am an agnostic turned completely around into a religious person. This happened in the year 2003. He is male, he didn't want to give his age, and was published in 2010. Good job. Good job. You've, uh, you've turned the psychedelic experience into something religious. And I find it very fascinating how people who maybe believe in uh, Hinduism might see the Hindu gods appear, they might see Shiva, or people who believe in Islam, you know, they'll see their prophets. I guarantee, if the person smoking the 5-MYO was born in the rainforest of a tribe, he would have not seen a woman in a robe, and he would not have seen whatever the hell he saw that, you know, claimed was something religious. He would have seen whatever the hell his tribe believes to be, you know? And and I guess he kind of said that. All the religions religions aren't wrong. So you could argue that maybe it came to him in the form of the religion he was comfortable with to send him a message versus if he was of a different, you know, religious background, even though he wasn't religious, but if he was born in a different place with a different religion, he would have seen whatever the predominant figure was there. You could argue that. You could argue this is all in his head. I don't necessarily think it's all in his head, to be honest. But there's something very interesting that happens when you have these experiences. As soon as you come, I do believe that you are exiting your body and you're going somewhere else. 
But as soon as you come back into the body, the mind then has to fill in the gaps and it almost creates a story to try to match what happened. And it's very plausible that what happened is this story came to him as he came back. I mean, the only way that that seems invalid though is because apparently the woman was speaking through him and he spoke in an actual woman's voice. So let's pretend that's a lie. Uh, usually what will happen is the person has the experience, they come back and then they have to conform this ineffable thing into understandable language. And it, it's often, you know, so beyond anything a word could ever describe, people have to use analogies and examples um, from everyday life just to try to make sense of it. See, even I'm struggling right now. That's usually what happens. So usually when people explain their trips, they're explaining it from the framework of their sober mind because when your mind is altered to that degree or when whatever you leave your body, you're, you're no longer using this mind to um, record the experience. It is something just so alien that I can't put language to it. The only way that that doesn't make sense here is because apparently he spoke in an actual different voice, which leads me to believe this story is absolute and utter fucking bullshit. I think he's lying. Look, straight up, this guy is full of shit. He might have some kind of motive for writing this. Maybe he did have a really religious experience and he wanted to touch it up a little bit, add some, you know, sprinkle in some bullshit to make it sound even more unbelievable to get people to read it and be like, oh my God, God is real. Because what really got me is this whole bit about the, what was it, the riches of the afterlife? Then after we turn with God in heaven, we get to receive all the riches of the afterlife. It just kind of contradicts what he said. So the whole point of being here is to live life. But like, if you knew that there was riches in the afterlife to be had, couldn't you put off living your life and just look forward to your death? And it can be used as a way to manipulate people and make them just put up with a shitty life with the promise of their death will at least be fantastical. Like I just, there's so many problems that I have with this and it was almost well written, except there was a few times where it's like, why could he not read it back and just fix the mistakes? But whatever, that's just me being, I guess, a grammar Nazi here or something. Um, regardless, it was a good story. It is evident of some types of experiences that can happen. He did not practice any fucking safety. There's a good chance that he actually did stop breathing because if you don't weigh out your doses, people have died. So what would I have done differently is get an accurate scale and don't do this tough guy, macho man bullshit where you think you can just take a big dose because when you die, it happens really quickly. There's usually not a warning. It's one second you're alive, the next you're not. You don't get a warning. You're just fucking gone. So don't play games with your life trying to show off to fucking Ken. Okay, stupid, stupid, stupid. This story has potential, but just so reckless, unnecessarily reckless. People die every day, every single day from being reckless like this. Don't be one of them. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, head on over to psychsubstance.shop to get one of our very own trip blankets. If you enjoy this content, head over to our Patreon page where you can pledge as little as $2 to see uncensored videos that we can't show on the YouTube. And as always, leave a comment for the algorithm, hit the like button, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Cheers.